Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! <laughs> I'd like to welcome everyone to worship this evening as we celebrate the perfect birth of Jesus. Uh, he was born the birth that, that we are unable to because of our sin. He lived the perfect life that we are unable to. And he died the death that we deserve. And so we, we celebrate tonight uh, that the light of Christ is coming to the world. Uh, the service will have uh, candles, lit candles. Uh, remember to hold the lit candle up and down. And if it's the unlit one, do that one sideways. And so don't try to tilt the lit, lit candle that way because wax will go everywhere and you'll burn yourself and that would not be good. So um, we sing our opening hymn after the ring of the bells, number 379. Please rise. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light of the darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And the name of your church. Christ is born in Bethlehem. Alleluia. Oh, come, let us adore him. We sing with the angels. We rejoice with the shepherds. We marvel with Mary. We glorify and praise God with the whole Christian church. Christ has shined his wondrous light into our darkness. We gather to worship the Word incarnate. Christ is born in Bethlehem. Alleluia. Oh, come, let us adore The congregation may be seated. The first reading is taken from Isaiah, the ninth chapter. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in darkness, on them has light shining. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. For the yoke of his burden, and the staff before his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called upon the Lord. My God, the Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and uphold with justice and righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The text for this evening's message is the, the Old Testament lesson which we just read to each other. Christmas is finally here. Uh, if there's any more decorations for the house, it'll have to be a last minute kind of thing. I know that that Dollar General is open till 10 p.m. tonight if you still need something. And they do still have stuff in stock. Uh, the, the, the food has been prepared, or at least most of it's underway and purchased. Family and friends are perhaps gathering, and they'll, they'll come into your house, and uh, they'll, they'll look at your tree, and, and the, the, the gaze of the eye goes to the top of the tree. And what kind of tree does your what kind of topper does your tree have? Is it a star? Is it an angel? Is it something else? At the top of our tree is a toilet paper angel that I made when I was in kindergarten. Not at the top top, because beyond that there's a crown of thorns that was given to the ant. And then above that is a, a more appropriate looking angel. Every time I look, I can look at the top of the tree and know what is important about Christians, about Christmas. Isaiah talks about being in deep darkness, and yet there is a brighter light. To those of us who live in a dark and sinful world, Isaiah directs our gaze away from the darkness and to the light of Christ. Those shepherds at first Christmas knew what darkness was about. They were out in their fields abiding their, their flock by night. And as a shepherd, their job was to keep the flock safe. Uh, if we're out in the nighttime, uh, we maybe have one of the headlights or maybe we got like a, a LED flashlight and we hear something, we shine the light that general direction. Um, the shepherds would have not looked at even the light of the campfire probably they want to keep their night vision keen so if there's any kind of threat out there if there's if there's whatever kind of critters want to take the flock they want to be able to see what's going on 
No, they, the shepherds knew darkness. They knew what it is to even a Middle Eastern winter night to look out for the threats. Darkness can be tiring. Uh, for those of us, we know what it is to have long winter nights. We know what it is to, to go to work and it's dark outside and come back from work and it's almost dark outside. And you just long for the, the, the sunlight. Long for that, that, that light because we know we'll feel better. It's a time of year with the lack of light where people have despair. People have dread, anxiety, health issues because of this lack of, of light. But even more than a lack of physical light, there's a spiritual darkness that we all live in. The sin since the fall that we don't see things clearly. We, instead of gazing at the light of God, we turn away. And we grow to learn to love the darkness that we're in. It's sort of like if you have a clean room, and then but you shine a flashlight underneath the sofa or the bed, and you wonder where all the dirt and the gunk comes from. It's easier just not to look underneath the sofa or the bed, turn off the light, and just go on. Yeah, there's some dirtiness there, but we're just going to ignore it. We don't like seeing things clearly. The darkness hides our sins of pride, our sin of greed, idolatry, deception, adultery. At the time of Isaiah, the big sin was idolatry. They worshipped things they weren't supposed to worship, gods they weren't supposed to worship. And so God allowed the Syrians to come in and to invade. And this is a cycle of God's people. Uh, they would Things would be going well, they'd be worshiping God, then, then there would be some sort of sin or spiritual darkness would come in. Uh, the Lord would allow them to experience the consequences, there would be some sort of, of oppression. They'd cry for mercy and there would be deliverance, and the people like, yay, until they start doing something bad again. This is the same kind of cycle that we have in our world, the same kind of cycle in our lives. What kind of darkness affects our world today? We hear of poverty and injustice and terrorism and crazy people with weapons of mass destruction. We can pay attention to all these dark things. They can distract us from following the light of Christ. But what about you as an individual? Is there loneliness? Is there stress that just won't go away? Is there guilt over that one thing that you did wrong years ago and you sort of covered up and so you're covering it up that it still sort of eats at you? You're afraid that maybe someone will find out? You have financial pressure. Isaiah knew that God would send flickers of light occasionally throughout the Old Testament. Glimpses of a greater light to come. Isaiah said that the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light on those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. And when the light comes, it changes our experience of everything. When the light comes, it transforms how we see the world. The scariness and the darkness is longer there because the light shines upon us like, oh, that's not so scary at all. We know that the shepherds at first Christmas, when the light came and the angels of the Lord shone around them, the darkness was the last thing on their mind. They heard the angels sing the good news of Christ's birth. They said, oh, 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 we got to get to tell other people about this. Come, let us go to Bethlehem and, and, and proclaim what has been done. And they, they found the child and they worshiped the child. God, in his compassionate mercy, has kept his promise in sending the light into the world. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And this light is the life of this life is the light of men. It's a light that cannot help but to cut through the darkness. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. 
Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The light of the world has dawned. Banishing the darkness of the world through the message of the gospel, through the message of the good news of Christ Jesus. The light of the world has dawned upon you. Banishing your darkness. Banishing your despair. Banishing whatever goblins are out to get you. And replacing it with hope and joy and peace. He is indeed the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Reconciliation and Restored Relationships. The Prince of a, the, of a Restored Order that all things are right. So what is on the top of your tree? Is it a star? Reminding you of the light that shone to Jesus' bed for the, the wise men to follow? Was it the light of an angel that announced the Savior's birth? Both the star and the angel were simply pointers to the brightest of lights. Jesus Christ, who pierces through the darkest of sins, bringing glorious light of God's grace in forgiveness, in life, and peace to the folks 2,000 years ago and to you and me. It's a light that transforms us. Fear not. Be not afraid. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. We continue by singing hymn number 361.
In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We sing hymn number 368. Responsibly, Psalm 96 is printed in the bulletin. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord our families and families. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before Him all the earth. 
say among the nations, The Lord reigns. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar, and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord. For He comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will, he will judge, judge the world in righteousness and the, and the people in His faithfulness. The King has chosen to make His home here. He was not silent about it either, but sent His angels to tell others. And like the rest of the creation, the angel praised. Continue with Luke chapter 2. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, if there are any young children who like to come forward for the children's message, now is the time. Good evening. Is there anybody here that is scared of the dark or used to be scared of the dark? Used to be scared of the dark? You scared of the dark? Ah, yeah, yeah. Why, why, why are you scared of the dark? It's really dark. It's why are you scared of the dark? Because it's really dark. Yes. When it's really dark, the stuffed animals are staring at you. That is sort of creepy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I know that when it's really dark, it's like hard to move around. Like sometimes like like if the power goes out and you're in like a basement room, like, whoa, you don't know where you are. It's like, oh, I don't know which way to go, right? Yeah, so sometimes you bump into the walls. When the lights go down in your basement. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Now, now, if if someone who loved you and who loves you know that you're scared of the dark, what what maybe some things that they would they would do for you? Yeah. Get you a nightlight. Yeah. A hug. Oh, oh, yeah, 
Now we, we I have here a gift. Did someone to open up the gift? <laughs> Let's see what it is. Because God loves us and God does not want us to be scared. And so God gives us not a night light, but he gives us the light of the world, which is Christ Jesus. So just as we could use this to like see around our room, so if we have to get up and go to the bathroom of the night, we know where we're going, and the animal's eyes won't be scary at us, and it won't be like Monsters, Inc. with, you know, Sully and Mike Wazowski, and, well, Mike Wazowski, that's where, but yeah, it won't be like that, yeah? Yeah, Jesus is there for us. It's a different way. But Jesus is there for us because he is the light of the world. Okay. Um, you have something to say, Tanya? You're in the dark and the light light comes out. And then the light comes out. But then the light comes out. And 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 then the light comes out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us night lights. We thank you for giving us the light of Christ. To shine, into our dark world. to shine into our dark world. Please help us, Please help us. Be, people of the light. be people of the light. Shining the light to others. Shining the light to others. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Okay, take, take a piece of candy, one for you and one to share. Titus, the second chapter. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, 
waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. You sing hymn number 377. Mm -hmm. and offerings.
our Lord Jesus Christ is born in Bethlehem. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. His light shines in the darkness of this world. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. He brings peace, unity, and salvation to all the earth. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. He brings good news to those who are far off. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. He comes to sacrifice his life for his people. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. He comes to restore all creation. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. He comes to comfort the oppressed, persecuted, and grieving. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. He comes to heal those who are sick, injured, and recovering. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Lord Jesus, you left your home in heaven to join us here on this broken earth. You left the warmth of your Father's embrace to join us in the cold world. You fill us with all. Lord Jesus, accept our offering of praise. Jesus, we are sinful from birth, but you were born pure and holy. Born of a virgin, you chose to rest in a bed of hay. We praise you for your perfection, and we thank you for choosing to rescue us. Lord Jesus, accept our offering of praise.
You came to die for us, to take our guilt, so we can find a home in heaven. Infant King, we confess our sin and rejoice that you've taken it from us. Oh Jesus, it is good that you have made a home for us in heaven with you. Lord Jesus, accept our offering and grace. don't know what you've done for us. They think their homes are here. Open our mouths to share the wonder of what you did on Christmas. Open our eyes to opportunities and give us wisdom and courage to speak of your grace. Lord Jesus, accept our offering of praise.
as you're able, please rise. O oh Jesus, take all these offerings of praise and use them in your glory. Help us look forward to home. And we pray the words you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy life is the kingdom, and, and the power, and the, and the glory, forever, forever and ever. Amen.
Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we, grant that as we have known on earth the wonder of that light, we may also behold him in all glory in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ, through your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. For look upon you in favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing hymn number 387. Please remain standing.